What's up everybody, Jeremy Weiss here with Weiss Tech Hockey and today I wanted to show you a drill that I've been using as a precursor to the three zone timing drill. So uh, the three zone timing drill is actually one of my very favorite passing and timing drills, um, but it is a little bit complicated. So um, what I've been doing is as I feel like teams are just almost ready to start breaking into those more complex passing and timing drills, um, what I'll do is I'll begin introducing simplified versions of those drills. And this is one that uh, I consider to be a simplified version of the three pass, or sorry, three zone timing drill. So uh, let's pull up the rink and I'll show you how this goes. Um, basically what we've got here is four cones. You can see we've kind of got them staggered. So there's uh, one cone that's just slightly inside the zone and then um, another cone that's in the neutral zone. And then the same thing on the other side, one cone slightly inside the zone, then another one in the neutral zone. Uh, we've got line up in each of the four corners with pucks in the face-off circles. Okay, um, to start the drill we're going to have a passer here. Um, that's just for the very first rotation just to get the drill started. It is a perpetual drill which means once it's started uh, it continues on its own automatically. So here's how the drill looks. Um, <clears throat> on the whistle we're going to have the first player from this line and the first player from this line are going to leave. Okay, so the first guy is going to swing down and swing just inside that cone. Now the cones are there just for a general reference point, but um, obviously as the drill progresses and the players need to start timing it, they may need to swing a little bit lower uh, to make the timing work. But the cones are there just for kind of a general reference point. Um, as he swings low, he's gonna receive a pass from the passer. So a pass comes out, okay? The first player in the other line is also leaving at the exact same time, except he's timing it. Okay. Now when we talk about timing, I generally like to have kind of uh, key indications or key indicators that basically, you know, man A doesn't swing until this key indicator happens. Man B doesn't swing until man A has done his job. So it kind of one thing needs to be built off the previous uh, key indicator. So this guy's swinging through, his key indicator is he's not going to start making that break until what? Until he sees that the pass is on its way. Um, so he's not going to just go ahead and swing through um, if this pass has been missed or if the pass you know, hasn't been made or whatever. So as soon as he sees that this pass is on its way and it's about to be received, now he's going to break. So he breaks through, again timing it so that this player can receive it and one touch it up to him. Okay? So that's why I call it the one touch timing. Um, after this happens, the second player is going to pick up the puck and basically just go all the way down, take a shot, okay, and the player who received the initial pass is going to come down the ice, pick up a puck from the circle, and you may have guessed this already, but this is where the rest of the timing drill comes in. So he's going to get ready to make a pass to the next two players in line that are coming from the opposite direction. So the indication for these two players to leave is when this pass has been made. Okay, so as this pass is being made now, and I'm gonna do this in a different color so that it's a little bit easier to keep straight. Um, as this pass is being made, this player has left. So he's coming down, and what's his key indicator? His key indicator is he doesn't wanna go until he sees that this guy has A, remembered that he's the one that's making the pass, okay? Um, especially with young players or younger teams, sometimes they forget, the second man forgets that he's the one that needs to make that pass. So communication's big there, remind your players that they need to make the pass. So he doesn't, he's not gonna break until he sees that that player is there, ready to make the pass, and has the puck under control. So as he sees that that has happened, now he's gonna come in, break, and present himself as an option to receive the initial breakout pass. So that's where that comes in. Okay, and then the same thing is with the other player, is he has left at the same time, but he's watching and waiting, and as he sees that that first player has received the puck, then he breaks, okay? And again, it's a little one-touch pass up ice. Okay, sorry, gotta get my thing to, uh, register there. Okay, so he's going to come up, pick up the puck, go down, take a shot, and the same thing that just happened is going to happen again. So there's the shot, the player who made the initial pass, or who received the initial pass, is going to come up, swing in, pick up a puck, and now he's making the pass to the next two players in line that have left. 
Okay, so that is, that's it. That's basically the, the drill in a nutshell. A um, couple little quick things that I like to stress with my players, especially when it comes to timing. When it comes to timing, it's better to be a little bit late but speeding up into the play than a little bit too early and slowing down or looking over your shoulder for a pass. So um, stress that with your players. But again, remember, um, uh, key indicator A leads to key indicator B, which leads to key indicator C. So none of them can happen. Like you, you can't just have everybody swing through. You have to be timing, timing based on the you know the previous event. So that's uh, that's the one touch timing drill. Hopefully you get a little bit of usage out of that. But like I said, it leads really really well into the three zone timing.